a man, the legend himself, Andre Drummond, and the Detroit Pistons. This is a team, while we thought they were going to be good, I don't think many people thought uh, Andre Drummond's coming out party would be to this extent, uh, putting up historic numbers. Um, of course, uh, myself, Phil, Jonas, Justin, and Mark. Uh, Mark, I'll start with you this time. I know uh, you're a big Andre Drummond fan. Um, what do you think has signified the leap from what he was last year to the absolute monster he is this year? You know, it, it reminds me of a couple, maybe three, four years back when LeBron just basically said, screw this, and started attacking the rim like crazy, and then he just kind of evolved into a completely different player. Drummond somehow did that this summer. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that just kind of Stan Van Gundy just pulled him aside and said, listen, we're going to take over this league, league young man because he is just being so aggressive. aggressive. Uh, that's just the number one trait for him offensively. He is just attacking the rim. Uh, his his post-up moves have become uh, – his arsenal has really, really grown in terms of what he does. Uh, posting up guys kind of got a jump hook. A few other things, his, his passing's improved. But it's just – He's, he's really honing into all these God-given gifts he has as a player. I mean, he is a beast of a man, and uh, he's just taking the he's just attacking the the, the league, or uh, just with no no opposition at all right now. Oh no, oh, no, absolutely, and and putting up numbers at this point when we're, when we're recording of uh, 18.8 points and 19.3 rebounds with 1.88 steals, which is pretty good for a big man. 1.63 blocks. Um, he's uh, he's obviously having a career year, uh, shooting over 50%, but he's not alone there, Justin. Um, I, um, I think there's some more unsung heroes, like we like to coin it here on HoopsLounge.com, mm -hmm. that are making this team um, you know, click, and maybe that starts with Reggie Jackson averaging 22 points a game. I mean, if I can go a little bit off script here, uh, we're talking about what's made Andre Drummond br break out, and if you're going to talk about unsung heroes... You, you kind of have to look at, on top of his training, on top of Stan Van Gundy, what other factors changed that allowed him to operate in this manner. I think a big part of that is actually Ursan Ilyasova. You now no longer have two centers operating the middle, clogging up space uh, in mm -hmm. Greg Monroe and Andre Drummond. Adding Ilyasova creates a lot more room for Drummond to um, operate in the post. He's obviously worked on his footwork. Um, but that extra spacing makes it tougher to double. It makes it tougher for a second player to come in and strip the ball away from him. Um, so Ilya Sova's presence has, has really had a big impact on him. And we, we see this all around the league, that once teams increase their spacing, those centers start to become more productive. Look at Tristan Thompson in Cleveland and Timothy Moskov once they had a legitimate spacer next to them in Kevin Love. Reggie Jackson, as you brought up, also is playing really well. Um, he, he's shooting it a little bit better than what I believe is sustainable, but at the same time, um, he's benefiting from the spacing because he can really show how just how aggressive he is with those uh, driving lanes. He, he's showing good vision, and as a defender with his length, he's really having a big impact on the court. Oh, absolutely. And uh, speaking of impact on the court, you know, uh, the players get a lot of credit, but uh, but the coaching staff. Um, obviously deserves a lot there too. Uh, now, Mark, I know we had a chance to meet with Mr. Stan Van Gundy. Uh, uh, perhaps enlighten the, the world hoops launch style on how on what he brings to this team and how he's made a turnaround. Uh, number one, basketball intelligence. He's probably one of the smartest guys uh, in basketball on the planet right now. Uh, two, just he kind of creates this fatherly culture. I mean, we got to see him actually coach a coaching clinic for, you know, 18, 16 year old kids. And he just very much has this kind of wise Obi-Wan Kenobi kind of feel and he can control, completely controls the room in a good way. Uh, there's no sense of menace or fear. It's just, you know what? I'm a great guy. I'm going to show you what to do. And if you don't do it, we're going to do it again. He'd tell, he'd tell stories about Dwight, you know, Dwight, when he didn't want to run up the court, he's like, we're going to do it again, Dwight. We're going to do it again. And he just has this great presence to him, and he commands respect from his players. And you, and you can see that from Andre. You can see that from all these guys. It's taken a year or so for these guys to meld together. If you remember correctly, a year ago at this time, people were talking about Andre and, and Stan. I don't know if this is going to work. Well, it takes time. Completely different systems, completely different cultures. they got to learn each other, and it's, it's starting to click for them. And, and, and these guys, 
Uh, I, I think they spent the summer very much co cohering together, creating a new system, like Justin said, bringing the right roster moves. Uh, I didn't see it really clicking this fast. I don't think they're going to be able to sustain it, but it's it's really nice to see, and it really speaks to what Stan brings to the court. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, absolutely. And talking about systems and making players perhaps better than they would be otherwise, uh, Justin, uh, uh, there's a guy who's kind of been thrown to the scrap heap before this year who's kind of making a name for himself, and and it's and, and it's not the Morris twin uh, that's made headlines for demanding a trade out of Phoenix. It's actually his brother, Mark Marcus Morris, averaging... 16.6 .6 points and 6.6 .6 rebounds a game in 38 meaningful minutes a game. Um, uh, uh, Marcus Morris and Contavious Caldwell Pope, two guys who weren't doing big things last year, but now are our main fixtures in this team and their success. Uh, uh, can you maybe speak to their turnaround? Um, I, I mean, Marcus Morris, I, I don't know how meaningful what we've seen so far is. Um, obviously, he has gotten a little bit older, so there is going to be some improvement with his game. Um, maybe this is just kind of an environment that he's uh, more suited for. Uh, Contavious Caldwell Pope, to me, is the more interesting one. Um, we're really starting to see him develop uh, primarily on the defensive end of the floor. I mean, I don't know yeah. if you guys watched the game against Golden State, but what he did to Steph Curry was out of this world. Uh, I don't yeah. think we've seen a player give him that much trouble this season. Um, so while the offense of production isn't exactly where I think you'd want it to be, and that's kind of one of the problems with Detroit, and like Mark said, he doesn't know how sustainable what they're doing is right now. Part of that's because they don't have the bench scoring. Maybe they get some back once Brandon Jennings returns. Um, but defensively, the the growth that we've seen of Contavious Caldwell Pope um, has really been impressive. And if you're a young player, if you can make an impact on the defensive side of the floor, you're going to have a place in the rotation. Uh, if you're not a minus on the court, uh, he's going to eventually need to expand his offensive game. And I think he has nice form on a shot, uh, things like that. So I, I think that will come. But the growth he's shown on that end has really, really impressed me this year. Uh, absolutely, and uh, there's a last one that I want to throw back to Mark, but be be before I, I finish up with you, Justin, uh, there's one guy who we've both been excited for, and, and, and it, it, we're sticking with young guys, Stanley Johnson here, obviously being brought along a bit slowly, 21 uh, minutes a game, but putting 7.6 points, 4 rebounds. Um, what's he been to you? I mean, he's he's been a rookie. He's he's shown glimpses of being really exciting, shown the promise that uh, a lot of people felt that he had. But at the same time, like he, he's still learning how to read NBA offenses and defenses. I think it's uh, it's really early on uh, to try to figure out what he is. But um, he is the player that I think does have tremendous upside. But it, it's going to be a long time before we really. Um, get a true sense of what Stanley Johnson is. Absolutely. And as a as a kind of closing thought on this, uh, Mark, I, I, I want to start with you, and then Justin, um, I want you to comment right after to see if you agree or disagree. We're sticking with Andre Drummond because he, he's ahead of the snake here in terms of the uh, best player on the team. Mark, do you think he has any chance, and and maybe argue yes or what, yeah, yes or no, of being a defensive player of the year or B a dark horse MVP. Uh, he will not be defensive player of the year because Leonard uh, going at the rate he is, and I think it is sustainable. I think I said it myself. Kawhi did not deserve defensive player of the year last year. I think he will deserve it this year. Uh, the way he's been locking up guys like KD and Melo already early in the season is just ridiculous. Uh, Drummond is definitely in that conversation, but I think Kawhi will have wow. it. In terms of being an MVP, no, because he's in the East. Uh, even if he puts up ridiculous money numbers like 20 and 20 all season long, they got to win 50, 55 games, which I don't see them doing. Uh, but, I mean, he's definitely going to be in serious uh, conversation for being like a, you know, what, third-team All-NBA type of guy, and that's amazing if you can get there. Man, 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 do I disagree with the defensive side of the floor. I, I, I still don't think Andre Drummond yeah. is a good defensive player. Like, good defensive player. I don't think he's anywhere near uh, But he gets point. rebounds, he gets steals, he gets blocks. Why doesn't that count, Justin? 
I'm, I mean, you can look at that kind of stuff, but it's kind of like a Kobe Bryant fan looking at the make shots rather than looking at the overall picture. His positioning isn't Yeah, he and there. Tim he... Well, That's a sore subject this year. <laughs> <laughs> I, I understand that, but uh, I, mean, I think it's an apt analogy because he does a lot of the showy things, and he does things defensively other players can't do because of his length and athleticism. It's similar to Hassan Whiteside. But on a possession uh, by possession basis, he's frequently out of position. His man defense isn't quite up to par, and I think Stan Van Gundy's going to help kind of unlock that out of him. I mean, he's 22 years old. Typically, we see big men mature defensively um, into what they're going to be around 24, 25. Um, he, he's still figuring things out. The growth we've seen out of him is, is fantastic. Um, it, it's actually kind of part of what makes Carl Anthony Towns in Minnesota so impressive is just how good he is defensively at 19 years old, how much he understands yeah. those concepts. He's that's already abnormal. at that point. Right. He, that's completely Happy abnormal. birthday, Carl, by the way. He turned 20 today. Happy birthday. Yeah, oh, well, there you go. Nicely done. Um, and, and way to date the part, podcast, Mark. <laughs> yeah, sorry. sorry. We have shelf life. <laughs> nah, it's fine. Um, but, yeah, I, I just don't see Defensive Player of the Year out of Drummond. Um, and when it comes to MVP, MVP hasn't come from a team that's won less than 58 games in a long time. Like, it's yeah. been about a decade. And this, um, even if he gets them into the playoffs, although it's the East, so as Mark said, uh, uh, maybe that doesn't count because the playoffs is like your health. Yeah, even if he gets them into the playoffs, even if it's a healthy win total, I mean, it, the way that voters have voted, I mean, I, I get that you're thinking progressively, you're, you're thinking value to the team, but wins have been a huge factor. If you're the best player on the best team in terms of wins or a top three team, you got to get over that 58 wins for voters to think, okay, you've made a massive impact and it's translated into a historic amount of team success. So without that formula, I just don't think voters are at the point where they're going to think about the MVP race in that way. Maybe most improved then? Um, that is certainly within the uh, realm of possibilities, uh, in my opinion. Yeah, and he's going to have tough competition. There's a lot of guys stepping up this year. Absolutely. Now, uh, Mark, before we go, are there, are there any closing thoughts uh, you'd like to give on these Detroit? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I have to mention uh, something called Hack a Drummond, which is going to become very apparent very soon. The man cannot make free throws. I think he's shooting at 40 45%. Uh, it's going to be pretty bad phenomenon, which is something Adam Silver has addressed a bit, but he said he's going to, you know, continue to let this That's kind 39%, of... That's 39%, uh, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's going to, he's going to let it fester in the league for a while, and you know what? Andre's just going to have to learn to make free throws, and that's part of the game, and uh, Stan is going to be on him to do it, and uh, he's got to do it. Uh, you think this is something uh, uh, we're going to have to deal with, Justin? Uh, uh, do you agree with him there, or do you think um, he's going to figure this out, or teams aren't going to try to take advantage of this as much as we think teams, they will? Teams are already trying to do it. Uh, why not do it? I mean, I'm I'm not someone that thinks that they should get rid of the uh, the the hack a player. Um, I, I think it's uh, it's part of the game. It's not super attractive, but it's not really hurting their uh, TV numbers. Got, oh, um, we, We've got to teach basketball fundamentals and free throws. Exactly, and part exactly. Yeah. If, if you're going to leave a glaring flaw in your game, you're going to have to deal with it. Um, I think it's simple as that, play basketball. Um, so I, yeah. I have no problem with teams doing it. And I think, I mean, Drummond's been tremendously successful with teams doing that. So, I mean, it's kind of tough luck. It's going to be something he has to deal with. But at the same time, hey, it's part of the game. And and I never want to hear the, I have big hands, it's difficult to, for me to make free throws because Kawhi Leonard makes his free throws. <laughs> well, hey, hey, uh, don't tell that to Spurs fans. I think some of them are still a little bit bitter about what happened uh, yeah. in Miami. I, I, Miami still, I still am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, this has been the Andre Drummond Show, a.k.a. the Detroit Pistons with Phil Willow, Justin Rowan, Mark Griffin, this is Hoops Lounge Audio Podcast. Join us every week for videos, articles, podcasts, all that and more. We'll join you next week. Take care, guys. Keep in the lounge. <laughs>